Hey, how you doing econ students? This is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. We're going to put aggregate demand and aggregate supply together. In an earlier video, I explained aggregate demand, which is downward sloping. I also explained aggregate supply, which is upward sloping. They come together just like a market and meet at equilibrium. Now this equilibrium is different. It's not the equilibrium for a market, it's the equilibrium for everything. All the things demanded and all the things supplied. The quantity represents the current GDP, the output we're producing in our country. Now just like a regular market, these curves can shift and the result will be a change in price level and output or GDP. So if there's an increase in aggregate demand, the price level will go up and the quantity or the output will go up. If there's a decrease in aggregate demand, the price level will go down and the quantity will go down. If there's an increase in aggregate supply, the price level will go down and the output will go up. And if there's a decrease in the aggregate supply, the price level will go up and the quantity will go down. So there's only four possible things that can occur. A demand shock is when the aggregate demand shifts. For example, during the Great Depression, there was a decrease in the stock market, which caused a decrease in consumer wealth and a decrease in consumer spending. This was a demand shock. Now, what about supply? If we are back at equilibrium and there's a decrease in the amount of oil that we have, that would cause the aggregate supply to shift to the left. This means price level would go up and quantity would go down. It turns out that this is the worst case scenario in the economy, and it's called something. It's called stagflation. The reason why is because we have inflation, our higher price level, at the same time as a stagnant, slowed down economy. Now all these things I've showed you are all happening in the short run. Now it's time to talk about the long run. Let's assume we're here in the economy at full employment, it means our economy is at full output with four to 6% unemployment. The vertical line represents the long run aggregate supply and equilibrium is right there so we're at full employment. If there's a decrease in aggregate demand, that would mean we're now in a recessionary gap. That means our output, where we currently are, our actual GDP, is less than our potential GDP, or our full employment GDP. That amount is called a recessionary gap. Now this is gonna happen in the short run, but what's gonna happen in the long run? Well, we could do some sort of government policy to try to close the gap, or we can let the economy fix itself. The economy is self-correcting over time. So eventually, if we had a recession, wages will fall and the prices of resources would fall, and that means aggregate supply would shift to the right, putting us back at full employment. In the textbook, this totally makes sense. But when it comes to a real economy, we usually use some sort of government intervention to close a recession because this might take decades. This is because wages are sometimes very sticky and they don't adjust very fast. But given enough time, the aggregate supply would eventually increase and close that gap. Let's assume we're back at full employment right here. What would happen if there's an increase in aggregate demand? Well, in the short run, our actual GDP would be beyond our potential GDP, and so we'd have an inflationary gap. Remember, this is the short run. In the long run, if there's inflation, eventually wages and resource prices will increase, and that'll cause the aggregate supply curve to shift to the left, putting us back at full employment. Now, it turns out that's where that vertical long run aggregate supply curve comes from. It's when the economy self-corrects itself putting us back at full employment. The trick is to remember that when there's a recession, wages will eventually fall, and when there's inflation, wages will eventually go up. Hopefully that makes sense. Until next time.